and I usually make the podcast about knitting called Inner Knits. But today I decided to share something else with you, and that is my yarn and my crafting space. And um, yeah, I really find it interesting to see how others store um, their yarn and how they organize it. And that's why I thought I would share that with you. And just a little disclaimer there. Um, my yarn is by no means perfectly organized. Uh, but it is a system that works for me. Although I sometimes change it up a little bit. And I did that this past summer and I found a new system for it that seemed to work out quite well for me. And so, just so you know, an important thing, um, I'm not sponsored by anybody. So, all the things I'm going to show you are just my things that I have bought or gotten over the years and I am not um, trying to do any kind of uh, promotion for these products. They, they're only things that I like to use and yeah, they're my preferences. And preferences, you know, it's a personal thing, so yeah. Okay, uh, my crafting space is downstairs and I'm now up up in um, our kitchen living room area and I will bring you downstairs and show you my lovely little crafting space. So this is the living room downstairs and we have a, a couch and my my daughters, uh, teenage daughter, daughters, they, their sleeping room is in, in this area. Um, but they don't use this space very often so I have reclaimed it and I have put in some lovely things that I like. So I have my granny stripe blanket over there which I absolutely love. I have a, oh what's the word, um, we call it puff in Norwegian. It is knitted by me uh, several years ago and it peels like crazy but I still love the color. And um, this is another granny square blanket that I crocheted many years ago and it is uh, felted um, so it's quite thick and usually it's just like this uh, it's too thick to and warm to use and I have this space as well and this is one of the spaces where I store my stash and I have some um, patterns categorized down here. This area is for um, uh, ongoing whips or UFOs. It's actually my space of shame, although I don't like that term. <laughs> it's really old UFOs down here and things that I've shown on the podcast earlier. So, but I I come back and I, I take a look in this area every now and then to see if I can pick up some old old works in progress and finish them or even decide to rip them out and do other things. And yeah, this basket is full of finished knits. And most, most of them are things that I plan to give away. And these are all the speedy selby mittens that I just completed. And I have a, 
a pile of socks here and older mittens. So yeah. Uh, over here are my three <laughs> places where I uh, keep my mini skeins of fingering or sock weight yarn and this is the basket that I felted earlier this year and they uh, the basket holds all of my um, mini skeins the bigger ones these are basically 20 gram minis or down to 10 10 gram approximately and it's quite full as you can see and this is where I keep the smaller minis so for instance uh, the scrappy socks that I knitted during summer holiday were out of minis from this compartment and over here in this little bowl is all the tiniest minis <laughs> the real minis because I don't like to throw things away so I will definitely find use for them as well. <laughs> so over here is where I store my knitting needles that I currently use. I have some sets, uh, inter interchangeable sets here and well, it's not the best system, obviously. I have some uh, DPNs here and in this bag I keep a lot of fixed circular needles. And I also have like measures and yeah, things like that, small notions and stuff. Um, quite accessible and easy to find and I also have a interchangeable set down here yeah it's the knit pro marbles mm -hmm. and over here I got a small selection of knitting pattern books. I I would say that these are the ones that I like uh, or most frequently are browsing through for inspiration. And a small pottery uh, clay thing that my daughter made for me at school. It's very sweet with some lovely tuft wool and wool soap. And yeah, here I got my mitten blockers from Knitography. I love them and they are too beautiful to be tucked away so I keep them hanging out. And up here I got some lovely uh, wool from Nina Petrina. This is the gradient I bought earlier this year. And I used to have my small mini balls of Tuku wool up here, but now I am about to transform them into a pair of mittens, so there I have taken them down. Yeah, and this is a cute little embroidery that my eldest daughter did in school. This is the name of my my son. And you know, all the gorgeous, cutest little thing that they make in school. <laughs> I think this is uh, supposed to be a pen holder, but it could be a department or place to store the DPNs, actually. And... This is my diffuser, which I also love, and I got a selection of um, 
oils, essential oils that I use on a daily basis. So now it smells lovely in here. And out here you can see <laughs> part of our garden and the trampoline that my kids love to use. Okay, so beneath this working desk I also got some stuff and this is actually a lot of fabrics. I I like to sew every now and then, but now it's been a while since I last sewed. So I have just taken all of my fabrics down from the shelves and yeah, they're just under under here for the time being. And uh, this is a basket of fingering weight untreated wool and it is Raumafin Earl and more Raumafin Earl <laughs> a lot of them I believe I also have some I think this is Isager Høylands Earl you know and this is the wool I bought in Estonia Texrena yeah and I gathered them in this basket for the purpose of finding a color combination for the uh, Loppa cardigan by uh, Piniguri. But I couldn't decide and that's why it's still in this basket. Over here is another basket that I usually keep knitting projects in but for the time being it stores a lot of my project bags that are not in use and down here well this is um, old knits that are grow grown out of or that I yeah all of these are Knits that I have made for my daughters and that they don't use anymore. Here is some spinning fiber, my drop spindle, which is still not repaired, so I can't can't use it. And this is actually quite fun. It is uh, a cardigan that I knitted in my early teens, but I gave up. I didn't like the red color, I remember, so, and it's a strange design with all of this stranded color work and these cables and then cables down here and I don't know, but I, I like to keep it as a memory. And this is a, another sweater that I knitted for my husband several years ago it turned out way too thick and it wasn't his color so I haven't finished it it's, it's just laying there and over here on the couch I have my pinguono and this large <laughs> bag from Loop London so I can work with it whenever I feel like it and I have my lumpy space shawl, which I am currently working on. This one. I love the granny stripe blanket. I really want to make another one, one day. Okay, so this is the other part of the, the living room downstairs. And this is where I uh, have my computer and uh, my Swift and I used to have my uh, sewing machine here as well but uh, since I'm not too keen on sewing at the moment it's stored down there together with the wheel that I just borrowed from my friend Daisy and I can't wait to give it a spin 
And this is a shawl that I knitted probably yeah, 20, 15, 20 years ago. <laughs> and it's made out of pure alpaca and it is so big and so warm that I have never really used it but I think it's quite lovely and nice got the hold in here as well but it's just hanging up here for decoration okay so this is the shelves where I keep the nicest yarn I got and I thought I had a lot of uh, gorgeous yarn but I couldn't really fill like one of these spaces so I guess I don't have as much as I I thought but anyway Lots of nice ones up here. So yes, next shelf. So this side uh, contains um, non-superwash wools. This is non-superwash merinos in a sweater quantity and it is fingering weight but it is on the heavier side. And this is the um, brushed uh, wool from Pharaoh Sheep that I got from Daisy. It's very special to me and must be a cardigan one day. And here I actually got some DK weights. I'm not pretty sure why they are there, but they are. So. I'm thinking about using them together with perhaps these for a color work yoke sweater. This is only a basket that's full of camera stuff. And over here I got some dedicated sock yarn. And I have um, a couple of sock sets. Uh, little French meadow over here and this is the cozy knitter um, and some self-striping yarns oh this is really beautiful it is freckled freckled whimsy this is a self-striper with sparkle from easy knits down here is one from Arbetta and I got some sock blanks and I love knitting from sock blanks so these will be fun to knit up and this is a very rustic um, sock yarn that I won as a prize from Tanya who has the Dutch knitting podcast called Hooked on Inkblobs 
She's also podcasting in English, making lots of beautiful things. So that's cool. Next shelf. This area here is my old storage for knitting needles, DPNs and some crochet hooks. I pretty much don't use them anymore, but I like the look of it for some reason. And this is a basket that I crocheted and felted years ago. And it is my storage of old fixed circular needles. Over here I have a... this is a tin can that I crocheted um, cover for. Um, quite like it. It's cheerful and nice. It holds my good pair of scissors and some tools for yeah, making progress keepers and beading and stuff, such. And this is my ball winder and my sock blockers. I have a ruler for sewing. And over here is a little box where I keep uh, ball bands and business cards and things like that and some notebooks. And down here, this is actually a basket where I keep my single ply yarn. So I don't have much single ply as you can see. This is it. This is a big gradient. Enough for a shawl. And down here I have the wool collection, the uh, alpaca, linen and silk blend. It's a gorgeous yarn. And these are also um, project bags, some smaller ones that I made, some larger ones that I made, and yeah, just project bags that, that are not in use. And down here are zippers, uh, sewing stuff, needles, threads, and uh, things like that, and a couple of nice boxes that I can't part from. <laughs> So I'm just keeping them for the time being. Okay, so that was that. And you might wonder where my commercial yarn is. And I will show you right now. It's inside that space. Okay, so this is the other location of my yarn. And this uh, actually doubles as our guest bedroom. <laughs> Uh, but it used to be my craft room and I used to have my my desk over here. So this closet uh, actually holds quite a lot of yarn. I used to have all my yarn yarns in here, but now it's mainly in these drawers down here. And I also have something up on this shelf. I used to have a box full of my nicer yarns here as well but uh, it didn't work out so I moved it and I want to start off by showing you these beautiful koftas that I have. These are very old. Uh, old Norwegian koftar that my great grandmother knitted and they are <laughs> made out of woolly wool so yeah I got them from my mother they have been in our cabin my parents cabin uh, for years and she gave them to me because I think I appreciate knitwear a lot more than she does Okay, anyway, um, to start off with the top shelf, um, this is a big bunch of acrylic yarn that I bought um, for the purpose of knitting a rug or a blanket, a thick blanket for my daughter. And these are all of the 
balls of baby wool that I need to finish my mother's piece cardigan. This is just some filling that I use for the Christmas balls when I run it. Arn and Carlos Christmas balls. Okay, so let's start off with the top drawer. And this is in the middle here, you have the alpaca department. Uh, pickles, they had a, a sale some years ago where I bought a bunch of thin alpaca. And now I can't remember why I bought all of this alpaca because I haven't used it. And I don't particularly like thin alpaca anymore. This is a blanket that I started crocheting yeah, at least 10 years ago. And it's made out of uh, thin alpaca. But I think I stopped crocheting it because I didn't fancy the colors. But now that I look at it, it's actually turning out not so, not too bad. Perhaps that is the purpose of the alpaca still being here. <laughs> I can use it to finish this this blanket. And over here we have some Puno by Rauma, which is also a baby alpaca merino yarn. And I have Meek. This is Sunless Garn and this is quite similar to Puno, same thickness and I have a sweater's quantity of this very very dark blue. Seems like it's turning out black, but it's it's a dark blue. I also have some thicker alpaca from Pickles again. I've been a good Pickles customer over the years. This is some alpaca cashmere. It's so battery soft. It's absolutely gorgeous. I bought four balls of this brown color in a sale some years ago. And I think I thought about knitting a cowl out of it, but I obviously hasn't done that yet. This is another yarn I bought on sale. Malabrigo worsted. But unfortunately I didn't I didn't uh, get that the worsted yarn was a uh, single ply. And I have heard of people who use it for uh, garments. They tend to peel quite a lot, so yeah, I'm very not, I'm very unsure what to to make of it actually. But the purpose originally was a um, sweater of some kind. And over here we have um, some miscellaneous skeins of Pickles Merino Tweed. This is their thicker tweedy yarn. And this is a single ply worsted white yarn from Pickles. And this is their um, four ply merino. And I also got some baby silk, baby alpaca silk. Yeah, even some leftover Angora. So that was the top drawer. Drawer number two is my commercial sock yarn drawer. <laughs> wow. So from left here um, are the fingering weight yarns. I have some solid colors. These are Fable and Sunnes Sisu and some old Sunnes Sisu with glitter and I think I have had this yarn forever and I <laughs> it's one of my treasures in my yarn collections. And 
And here is some West Yorkshire Spinner. I got some Regia. This is their one of their Christmas colors from last year. And knit picks, both in self-striping and solid colors. This is Fleechy, and this is a Stroll. I have some Bergerie de France, de France, and this is uh, Regia Perfect, which I bought last fall, and I think I have to pick out this ball again soon because these are very fall-like colors in my mind, like Halloweeny. And I also got a couple of balls of Crazy Sub Ball. And this is some small leftover from my um, Opal Advent Calendar from two years ago. These are some Arvetta Classic. And yeah, I have some quite a few of them. Uh, this department is uh, more like a sport weight yarn. These are some balls of patterns, croy socks that I was gifted and these as well. And over here are more tasselad, <laughs> quite a rustic sock yarn. This is some newer yarn that I just bought. Uh, it's called Robust. Still DK, DK weight sock yarn, I believe. It's a mix of wool, cortel, and nylon. And I wasn't sure what cortel was, but I looked it up after buying these, all of these balls, and it turns out it's acrylic. So <laughs> not too happy about that. But anyway, I will use it. Here I got some balls of sports rag, some smart. This is my balls of... Oh, I don't have any. There we are. These are the Stor Alpaca Stark, which is a, a blend of alpaca, merino wool and nylon. I love, 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 love this yarn. I think it's beautiful. And I have knitted socks with them, but I mainly use them for mittens and hats. Okay, so next department. Wow. It's the department of merinos and fluff. So... drawer is a combination of my cotton yarns which is this side of the drawer and uh, these are my non superwash woolier yarn and here is the worsted weight yarn this is actually a pillowcase that my eldest daughter started knitting two or three years ago and I just recently asked her if 
Uh, she wanted to continue knitting on this, but she said no. So I can just undo it and uh, make something else out of this yarn, which is Vamsegarn from Rauma in a very, very bright pink color. So the rest of this side here is worsted weight. Uh, Lindegarn, Fritids Ull, and this is a leftover um, Fritids Garn from Sonas, uh, as well as this one. And in the middle here is DK weight yarn. Um, these are some leftover from my uh, Selbe Mittens from Skandier's Selbe Mitten Club last year. As well as this, and this, and yeah. And on this side is fingering weights. And these are some gems that I have been having in my stash for a couple of years. They are it's the same wool as uh, Kauni, or Kauni yarn, yes. Uh, but I bought them in Estonia. And you have this long, long color changes. And I bought them with the intention of making kind of a shawl, I think. Um, so, but I'm not sure, I just like them. This is some Finnish, Finnish fingering white wool that I will eventually make a cardigan out of. I have enough for a cardigan. And here are a couple of balls of county. Yeah. And the rainbow county. I have knitted a lot with the, the rainbow county uh, previously. Um, especially kids' um, sweaters. This is actually one mitten that needs a companion and uh, then needs to be um, felted. It's supposed to be felted. Knitted with double fingering weight wool. Yeah, and here I have a bunch of uh, granny squares. They were supposed to be uh, a blanket. Actually, I I joined a Granny Square swap once, so these are all from that swap, so yeah. But I haven't decided if it will become a blanket or not yet. And my cotton yarn. Well, I am very much unsure what to do with my cottons, because I haven't knitted with it for at least three or four years and I have been giving away tons of yarn and that's not only cotton but a lot of other yarns that I knew I wouldn't be using again. I have been gifting that to uh, the kids school so that they can use it for different arts and crafts in, in the classes. And even to kindergarten, they also do a lot of arts and crafts with the yarn. So I am thinking about gifting a lot more of my cotton yarn because I'm. I really don't know. I really don't know if I will ever use it again. So that was the tour of my yarn stash, and uh, I hope you enjoyed watching. I, I have a system and it works for me at the time being, but there are still room for improvements, that's for sure. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I see you later. Bye bye.